Hey guys, this is the next screencast for Sports Psychology and this week, along with the extra one for Cheladurai's multidimensional model of leadership, we are going to be discussing social facilitation and inhibition. Okay. This idea stems from essentially the presence of others in terms of an audience or other individuals influencing a performance of one individual so it's being around someone or something might influence your own performance and when other people are around you in whatever capacity it affects your arousal levels and therefore that has a direct impact on your own performance for example if we look at an ice hockey game there is a big crowd it's very close in um, that crowd can affect your performance. Also, you've got other people that are, that are playing against you and your teammates. They can affect your own personal performance. Now, if arousal is increased, so let's say we have a crowd in there and your arousal is increased and that affects your performance positively, so you play really well, that's what's called social facilitation. If the reverse is true, so if the crowd are there pumping you up, how, but that as a decrease on your performance that's what we call social inhibition a good example of that might be for example John Terry high pressure game Champions League final could be that the other people such as Edwin van der Sar or his own teammates or the crowd or the occasion could have pressured his performance and he failed to hit his penalty so therefore that is social inhibition the performance decreased when we're looking at the influence on your performance in terms of who is influencing, we're talking about spectators and co-actors and they affect your arousal levels. And usually we, we direct these present others into two categories. The first category is what we call interactive others. And generally speaking, these are co-active competitors, for example opponents, we engage with them you're dribbling against them or someone's trying to defend against you that's an interactive other and emotive supporters so very passionate home crowds very emotional fiery charged supporters they they interact with you so a charged crowd might run on the pitch and shout something at you they're interacting with you so that side of, of this this diagram talks about interacting others However, the biggest effect on arousal levels and social facilitation and inhibition is on the other side of the model and it's what we call passive others. So when we talk about social facilitation, social inhibition, generally speaking, we're talking about the influence of passive others. And the passive others are one of two categories. They are either co-actors, so these are people who are non-threatening to your performance, e.g. if you were jogging up the street with a partner you're just jogging with them then they're not trying to trip you up or anything they're not influencing you in some way they're just a co-actor they're with you for example in an 11 aside football game it could be your two defenders working together but they're not negatively impacting with you so co-actors and the other side of that coin is a passive audience sometimes a passive audience can be silent but the audience, and this is a key point, need to be interested. So an interested audience affects my arousal levels with, if I play sport. A co-actor, a non-threatening co-actor, can affect my arousal levels levels if I play sport. So we're looking at that left side of the diagram. Now this guy is a jonk, associated the drive theory, which we know was invented by Hull from your first year of work, with this idea of social facilitation and he suggested that simply by being around a passive audience or being around co-actors can increase your arousal levels in your activity and therefore that would influence your performance and it can influence your performance either positively through social facilitation or negatively through social inhibition and ultimately that's what his theory suggested and we're going to look at the drive theory model and link this to some practical activities within the class as per usual make 
good notes. It's very short screencast, but make good notes. Bring them on to class, and we'll use this in relation to some practical base work.